All right, guys. So a couple of days ago, the Israeli occupation forces in the West Bank raided an Al Jazeera office and shut it down while they were taping the entire thing. So this took place in Ramallah. I would say that this is shocking and unbelievable, but unfortunately, given what we have seen in both Gaza and the West Bank over the last 11 months of this genocide, with the explicit and repeated targeting of journalists, as well as the banning of foreign journalists from going into Gaza to cover what Israel is doing, uh, this is unfortunately not surprising at all. So here we have Ryan Grimm, friend of the show, making an appearance on Al Jazeera where he talked about this. So let's go ahead and hear some of what he had to say. Joining us, uh, Ryan, this attempt to silence the media, is it a desperate attempt by a government that's increasingly under pressure? I don't know how desperate an attempt it is or if it's a presage for, you know, a a, a ramping up of the assault on the West Bank that we're seeing. I'm I'm not sure I would characterize it necessarily as desperation. Uh, It is it is certainly a lashing out and a flailing. uh, But, you know, this is of a pattern that we have seen consistently, as you just laid out. Um, And you say that it would potentially be a ramping up of, 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 of military operations uh, in the West Bank. So it's logical to conclude Israel wouldn't then want an international audience to see exactly what is happening there. Well, they, they, they very conspicuously prevented uh, international journalists from entering Gaza after October 7th. And also, as you mentioned, uh, have killed more than 100 journalists on, on the ground there. So the, the number of working journalists in Gaza now is dwindling into the, into the dozens. And so it, it does raise, it, sh- it would raise alarms for me if I lived anywhere near there, that step one would be the silencing of the media before step two, a ramping up of the assault. Israel is under an increasing amount of pressure, uh, especially internationally. We've seen the tide turn in terms of what is acceptable. We've seen accusations, heard accusations of violating international law. Meanwhile, Israel calls itself the only democracy in the Middle East. Actions like this against the free press, is it not then counterproductive? It doesn't help their case at all, does it? No, but I don't think that they have much credibility on the international stage left to lose. <laughs> and so I think that going into their calculations here, they, they, they are already... Uh, saying that we have we have lost this this mantle of the most moral army, the only democracy in the Middle East. Those have become punchlines internationally, uh, rather than rather than talking points that anybody takes seriously anymore. And so this feels like a, a gloves off situation because sending in uh, armed troops to you know drag journalists out of their headquarters is you know creates the kind of images that would make any country calling itself a democracy ashamed. The fact that not only were they willing to do this, but it appears did so partly for the production of those images suggests that they are beyond the the realm of worrying about the PR of how it looks. Yeah, I mean, he's 100% right. I mean, we'll continue this here in a second, but both on two different points. Number one, that Israel is obviously, I think, not a democracy by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, they are essentially keeping millions of Palestinians, both in Gaza and the West Bank, under their control. They have done so for decades at this point. The Palestinians in the West Bank and in Gaza effectively have no real rights that any democracy would attribute to itself. I mean, the idea that Israel is a democracy, it's like saying that the United States of America during the Jim Crow era, during segregation, was a democracy, right? It's like, okay, sure, for Jewish Israelis, that's, I guess you could call that a democracy, but no, in the broad sense of the of, of the word, it's obviously not a democracy, and especially when you have open assaults on the free press in the way that Israel has engaged in over the last, especially couple of months, but this goes back a lot longer than that. But just to give you a perspective in terms of how egregious some of these attacks have been, here is pointed out by uh, James Lee. This is just one example of one Al Jazeera journalist and how much he lost while trying to cover the ongoing atrocities in Gaza. This is Al Jazeera journalist Wael al Dadu, who was reporting in Gaza, and the IDF seemingly targeted and killed basically his entire immediate family. Okay, his wife was killed, his seven-year-old daughter was killed, his 15-year-old son was killed, and his 27-year-old son, who was also a journalist, uh, was killed as well. This is just one Al Jazeera journalist who basically had his entire immediate family wiped out by the IDF while trying to cover what's happening in Gaza. And also important that Ryan pointed out there that Israel has not been allowing foreign journalists to go into Gaza to cover what they are doing. And so obviously, I mean, That aspect of it, combined with the ongoing assaults and targeting of journalists, combined with the shutting down of Al Jazeera in Ramallah and in other places as well, you couldn't get more obvious in terms of Israel attempting to prevent 
journalists from covering what they are doing on the ground, right? Now, to put that further into perspective, we have reporting here, like from the CPJ, the Committee to Protect Journalists, saying that in 2023, more than three quarters of the 99 journalists and media workers who were killed worldwide died in the Israeli-Gaza war. I'll let you guys guess which side these journalists were killed on. Were they in Gaza or were they in Israel? Okay, three quarters of the journalists killed in all conflicts around the entirety of the world were killed in Gaza. Now, again, that's just 2023. We're now, what? I mean, we're in September now, nine months into 2024. How many more have been added to this list since then? This is back from June of this year. From The Intercept, Israel's war on Gaza is the deadliest conflict on record for journalists. They say they've killed one in 10 reporters in Gaza. 10% of all of the reporters in Gaza have been killed by the IDF. And of course, it reminds me of this um, this article that was published by The Onion, which unfortunately, it seems like gets it right more than many of our mainstream media outlets. They say, Israel accuses Al Jazeera of being a mouthpiece for journalism. And it seems like that's exactly what these attacks are about. They're not going after Al Jazeera because they're, they think they're, they're terrorists or whatever. They're going after them because they're one of the only major outlets who have the infrastructure, who have the equipment, who have the personnel, who are capable of getting the images, getting the message out from what is happening in the West Bank and Gaza. That's why they're trying to shut them down. I mean, we just saw the video in this clip of them. I mean, in some circumstance, as all of this was happening, they took the microphone out of one of these reporters' hands. You have IDF soldiers swarming in to a, you know, a journalistic outlet to shut them down. We continue here. And Hamda earlier outlined some of the challenges that journalists are facing in occupied territories. And I want to go back to this raid on the Al Jazeera offices on the occupied West Bank. We saw the banner of Shreen Apo Ahle mm -hmm. pulled down. The building doors have been welded shut. What's increasingly concerning uh, beyond the direct attacks on journalists is that on a day-to-day -day basis, intimidation is, is a very important tool, it seems, for the Israeli government and, and the Israeli military. It, it's, it's a pettiness, and it, it is a pettiness that also demonstrates power, because it says, I can do this thing that I recognize is petty and is wrong, that I recognize the entire world recognizes is petty and is wrong, and yet I can do it anyway, because it gives satisfaction. And so it is a way of flexing power and showing that we can do these things that are demonstrably immoral, to cowardly to rip down a portrait of a journalist who isn't there to defend herself. Nobody watching that thinks that it's anything other than just an embarrassing and horrible thing to do. So for them to do it consciously anyway is demonstrating that they can get away with it. He's 100% right. Guys, again, if you didn't hear him there, this is a video of these IDF soldiers who went into this Al Jazeera office ripping down a portrait of Shireen Abu Akhleh the Palestinian-American journalist who was assassinated by the IDF. I think it was a few years ago at this point. I covered it on my channel at the time, right? Of course, we had the same standard playbook from the Israeli government of denying it and then blaming Palestinians for it and then later admitting it and saying they're going to do an investigation and then never having any sort of accountability. We also had the U.S. government playing by that same playbook. But this was as, as clear as day in terms of a an assassination of a journalist who was highly respected in the region and around the world. And she was killed by the IDF. And so they put up a portrait of her. And as the IDF is going to shut down this office, they rip down the portrait. They rip down the portrait. As he points out there, petty, yes, but also a display of power. Because these Israeli security forces know they have a not only a complete free pass, from their own government, but also a free pass on the world stage because they know they are backed up fully at the hip by the most powerful government and military force on the face of the planet, the United States government. And so it is a show of power to say we can do this because we want to do this, because we feel like doing this. And as he pointed out there, at this point, it's almost like they don't give a shit about their standing on the world stage, which is pretty crazy, right? Now, I mean, you look at how many countries around the world have recognized a Palestinian state? It's a vast majority. It's basically just 
the United States, some of our Western European allies that are holdouts on that. I mean, you look at how much of the world is condemning their genocidal assault on the people of Gaza. You look at how much of the world has for years at this point condemned their illegal occupation of the West Bank where this exact situation is playing out. It's overwhelming, guys. It's overwhelming. If Israel was not, you know, given this shield on the international stage by the United States, they wouldn't be allowed to get away with this kind of shit. But because we back them, because we allow them to do this, they can get away with it. And so credit to um, to Ryan for going on Al Jazeera for talking about this. I mean, it's just so beyond egregious and disgusting. This is not difficult to figure out exactly what's going on, right? It's been happening for 11 months plus right in front of all of our eyes, right in front of the world. They don't bother to hide it. I mean, how many other videos the the you know, one the scenes that we just saw earlier in this clip here reminded me of how many different videos did I show you guys throughout the last couple of weeks of the bulldozers and the trucks like these um trying to run down journalists who were reporting live on air in the West Bank. I mean, bulldozers trying to run over journalists either directly to try to kill them potentially or even to just to try to intimidate them. They do this shit out in the open on camera, knowing they can get away with it, right? I mean, it's just so insanely disgusting. Obviously an attack on the free press. And um, you would think in a reasonable world that the United States, the supposed champion of human rights and democracy and freedom, that maybe we would have something to say about it. But instead, at the moment, as I covered in my video earlier today, uh, it looks like we are more likely to get ourselves into another war in the region, um, explicitly on behalf of the Israeli government. Politic guy has the best politic. Believe me, no one does it like him. Believe me, everyone is saying.